Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie and today I have bird DIYs for you using supplies from the Dollar Tree. I made a ton of bird DIYs to decorate your home for spring and I hope you enjoy. Let's go. Hold up, I am on my way. I'm in motion. Let's go to the ocean. Yeah, let's go outside. Okay, our first bird DIY. We're going to do a bird in a bird cage. And I found the cutest little bird cage at the Target dollar spot. It's like white iron. It has like a wood base and it is perfect. You could try DIYing your own. I've seen some ideas with like the football wreath forms or the trash baskets, but for $5 at the Target dollar spot, I would highly recommend just buying this because look how cute it is. Now, what I wanted to DIY though, is a bird to go inside of it. Now, the only bird I could find this size at Dollar Tree was this ugly little bird uh, cat toy. <laughs> so we're gonna DIY this and make this super cute. A cute little bird to go inside the birdhouse. Now, this has like a funny little tail on it. And so that's the first thing we're gonna do is just snip that off to get it out of the way. I basically just want the plush bird um, form and I'm gonna cover this with burlap. So I think the wings might get in the way. So we're just gonna go ahead and snip those off as well. And we are just gonna cover this whole thing. It is blue and you're gonna kind of be able to see through the burlap a little bit, but that's okay. Blue's kind of my theme today. So. Um, this is just a scrap of Dollar Tree burlap that I had left over from my Easter video. I had a lot of comments worried I was wasting my scrap burlap, but I always use my scraps, people. Come on. Okay, so what I want to do is have enough burlap to go over my both sides of my bird to kind of like sandwich it in there. So I cut down a piece that's enough to like cover the whole thing. And then what I'm going to do is go with my hot glue and I'm gonna go all the way around the bird, kind of sketching out the shape of the bird, but kind of on the outside of it, so I have enough room to glue the burlap to itself all along the edges of the bird to keep that cute little bird shape, which is really what I wanted. I was having trouble finding a bird this size for sure at the Dollar Tree. Their selection's not great when it comes to birds, but see what I did? I just glued that all the way around that. So now that I glued it and it dried, I can just use my scissors and cut the glued part all the way around into the shape of a little bird. Now, I didn't have it quite glued all the way, so I am gonna just glue that section down right there and just kind of trim it up a little bit. And you can kind of tell it's still a bird, but it'll look like a bird when we're done with it. <laughs> now, these are new at the Dollar Tree. They're burlap leaves. They also have burlap flowers that I'm gonna be using later on in another DIY. But look how cute these are. They are like white and brown burlap. There's like two different size and they're little leaves, but I thought they'd make really cute feathers for our little DIY bird. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna use like, I think both colors, they're kind of um, sealed and so they don't fray or anything like that. You know, they're kind of cut out perfectly. So that is gonna be great for this project. So let's start putting this cute little bird together. This was one of my favorite projects today for sure. I'm gonna go ahead and just start gluing some tail feathers on both sides of our bird the little brown ones, and then some of the white burlap leaves. And I think I'm gonna do like three on each side, just kind of flaring them out, kind of alternating colors too. Now for the wings, I'm also gonna use the little leaves. I'm gonna use two on each side, like a white one and a brown one. Isn't that cute? It's starting to look like a bird a little bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do it on the other side too. I want like a three dimensional bird that can be in our little bird cage. 
Okay, it's looking pretty cute. It's got a nice bird shape. It does need eyes though. So I thought I would use some Dollar Tree buttons for some eyes. So I'm just trying to find like some black ones that are about the same size. And I'm um, just gonna glue one of those on each side of my bird to make some cute little eyes. Super easy. I'm just kind of doing the flat side up. And those are pretty similar. Okay, so our bird has wings, it has feathers. I kind of want a beak shape here. And so I'm just gonna cut that into a tip, the little part that was glued. So it looks like the bird now has a little beak there. Just gonna clean up any of the hot glue on the burlap with my heat gun. The heat gun kind of like either it'll melt the glue or make it where it's easy to remove. So you can clean that all up and it's looking really cute. Um, I do want to add like a little bit more detail to the beak though. So I'm just going to take like an orange Sharpie works great on burlap and just kind of color that in on both sides to give a little orange beak. And now I kind of want to do like a nest on the bottom of our birdcage. I thought that'd be cute. And Dollar Tree has been getting some different like floral moss. This one is like brown. And I thought this would be great. The only thing is it was really dry and kind of messy. So I'll show you how I kind of overcome that issue. I'm just going to kind of measure out enough that's going to cover like the base of the birdcage and then kind of put it off to the side. You can tell by looking at the tray how crazy messy that stuff is. And so once I get like a little, you know, floral moss, I guess, patty, I'm going to take some of that spray adhesive from the Dollar Tree and spray it down pretty good. Go over it with my heat gun and dry it. Um, it didn't melt like some of uh, the things I've seen um, with heat at Dollar Tree. And then I'm just going to do that a couple of times till it kind of sticks together a little bit and makes it just a little bit less messy. I'm just going to scoop that up and lift that back onto my birdcage and that looks way better. Now they also have this green uh, lycopodium, I guess it's called. I thought it was really pretty too. So I thought we'd do a combination of like a brown and a green nest just to give a little bit more color. Kind of sitting this one on top, just kind of making a little ring for our little burlap bird to sit in. It's kind of cool. I've never really uh, DIY'd with that before. And it's a perfect little nest for our bird. I'm just gonna put some hot glue down on the moss so that my bird stays in place and glue him down to his cute little nest. Now my bird is a tiny bit bigger than my bird cage, but uh, it works because you know, there's holes in the side. So he's gonna be like just poking out a little bit. And so I think that looks pretty good. Let me give you a little close up of this cute little bird. I love him, isn't he adorable? And then all I gotta do is put the top of the bird cage on. And our first bird DIY is complete. I love the bird cage, it's so cute. If you see it at Target, you should really pick one up. And this is how it looks in my home. If you wanted to hang it, you could but then you would have to glue the base on and I kind of want it where I can switch it out for different seasons because it's so adorable. Okay, the next DIY, I found this cute little canvas at Dollar Tree. It says, welcome spring, and it's like a beautiful blue color, which I love for my decor. And so I thought we would take this cheap little canvas and frame it and make it look really cute for spring. I took down all of my Easter decor and so I have my spring chicken um, DIYs that I did recently, and I have beach stuff coming in, but um, everything just seemed kind of bare. So I really wanted some more spring DIYs to brighten up my house. And I think these turned out great. Now I'm just cutting all the way around the edges with a razor blade just to remove the canvas from the back. The only tricky part is always the corners where it's kind of folded up a little bit. But I know from framing Dollar Tree canvases before 
that I really only need the front to fit in this Dollar Tree frame. Now, I like this frame. It's a nice size. There's only a couple things I don't like about it. I don't like the hanger. It doesn't hang right. And for some reason, they don't staple the corners down. And so the frame like starts coming apart. And so that's the first thing I always do with these is staple down all the corners so that everything stays put. Now, the other thing I didn't really like, I don't really like about this is the wood on the back is really pretty, but the frame wood is like MDF. I wish they would made that pretty too because <laughs> I always have to try to disguise it. So here is the front of our Welcome Spring sign. Isn't that image beautiful? I love the color. I'm just gonna cut along the crease for the front of the canvas. It's gonna get me pretty close to the size of the inside of that frame. Almost fits. So I just have to do a little bit more trimming here um, to get it to fit down in there. It's almost impossible to get a perfect cut, but you can get pretty close. And I'll show you how to kind of um, disguise the edges too if you don't get it quite right. Now I'm going to do a rather thick layer of a matte Mod Podge all over the back of my frame because I am gluing down like a heavy canvas and I want it to stay put. And then laying my canvas right inside the frame. And anytime you frame one of these canvases, they just look so much better than if you leave them on their own, I think. So I have got it down. Now I'm gonna go over the top of it with more Mod Podge, sealing that down, kind of working in one direction there. And I love the sign. I love the sign so much that I bought um, two. <laughs> Maybe by accident. I don't even remember. <laughs> now, I told you I didn't really like the frame. So I'm trying a new technique. Um, this is just Dollar Tree paint. I've been trying to test it out for you guys a little bit to see how it is. I noticed it's thin. So this is a very soft pink. And I thought maybe we could distress like the MDF wood frame with the pink. Because there's some slight pink flowers on the canvas. Um, and I thought that would go well together. Now you'll see what happens since it is like MDF, like it soaks up all the paint when I dry it. So I do go over it a couple of times and it distressed it. I think it does look way better. I wouldn't necessarily say it looks pink though, but I like it better than it was before. So it's a win. Okay, now the next step in our little welcome spring sign is I want to make a new hanger. So I use the existing hanger to figure out how long I need. I just take some Dollar Tree thin twine, feed it from the back in and tie it in the front. That's going to make it hang flat against your wall because the hanger that comes with it definitely does not. I also have a couple of Dollar Tree white beads um, that I'm just going to string on here. Um, it always works a little bit better if you put a little hot glue on the tip of your twine before you start trying to do that. Um, and they have these um, painted white beads at Dollar Tree now. They are so cute. I'm just going to do two on each side just to provide a little bit more fun to the hanger and tie it off there in front. Now, almost complete with this little bird DIY, but there was just a few more things I wanted to do. I wanted to kind of cover the seam between the frame and the canvas to make it all sealed in there, all my cuts perfect. So I'm gonna use the thicker twine from the Dollar Tree, which is pretty fuzzy. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to burn some of the fuzzies off before I glue it down, because then it would just kind of be impossible. And just starting in one corner, I'm gonna glue that down. That little tool that you see me using there, some of you guys have asked about those. I use a couple different ones. They are the little cake decorating tools from the Dollar Tree and they work great for hot glue, especially when you don't wanna burn yourself. I used to use like makeup things, but I think I prefer the cake decorating ones better. So I go all the way around all four sides and glue that down. It's looking pretty cute. As you can tell, most of the paint definitely went into the frame, but it still looks kind of cute. 
Now I wanted some like tree flowers and I picked up some cherry blossoms from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna snag a couple of those little light pink flowers. They kind of remind me of the flowers on the canvas and just glue like three of them over here in the corner. This one's actually got leaves on it, which is cute. So I'm gonna go ahead and find another one with leaves here for the other side, just to kind of balance it out. And I thought that provided another little fun spring detail to this bird DIY. This is kind of a medium sized sign. You could really hang this anywhere. I think I'm gonna be hanging this um, in my dining room on the side of my kitchen cabinets. I think it'll look really cute there and I love the colors in it. Isn't it cute? So this is our second little bird DIY today. I love spring and we have so many birds in our yard. My son has one of those bird feeders that goes on the window now and he's just got birds in it all the time. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment to tell you about my Facebook group. I have it linked below. If you wanna show me what you guys are working on, if you make something that I inspired you to make, I would love to see it over there. Um, I also have a Facebook page that you can follow. I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest at Crafty Beach on YouTube. Okay, our next bird DIY, we're gonna use one of these embossed little bird signs from the spring section at the Dollar Tree. And then one of these little Dollar Tree wood signs that's framed a little circle. They are super cute. And then some of this new white burlap from uh, the Shore Living line at Dollar Tree, I love it. Now I have covered one of these metal signs before with burlap, but I use like the burlap bags the, with the plastic backing on them and it worked really well. So I wasn't totally sure if this was gonna work using like real burlap like this, um, but I decided to go for it and it did work. Um, it does take um, a little bit of time to dry, but you do get to see the details in it once it's dry. So I'm just gonna cut a piece of the white burlap out that's gonna be large enough. You wanna go larger. And then um, what I'm gonna do is just glue that to our bird first and then cut it down to size. So I'm gonna go all over with a nice thick coat of Mod Podge that will kind of seep through this. And it's always a little hard to get the burlap down at first. So I always kind of like hold it down and then go over the top of it with more Mod Podge. I'm using like a foam Dollar Tree brush. I'm kind of like sponging that down in it, making sure that I get every, all of the burlap glued down wherever there is metal bird and completely down in all of the different textures on there. So I got that glued down and I got it dried. So now I'm just using my scissors to cut down the burlap. I'm just trying to cut as close as I can without really showing any of the metal. And we're gonna have a little white burlap bird. I loved my first burlap bird so much. It kind of inspired me to make another one. And so this is another kind of version of a burlap bird for sure. And I wanted to do white because I'm going on that wood sign. I didn't want to do the brown burlap because it would kind of, you know, all match together. It wasn't super square flat, but it's okay because it's not going to need to be that way to glue it to the frame because the beak and the tail are both going to actually glue to the frame. And so I think it's going to be fine. I'm going to go ahead and hot glue that down right in the middle and both ends of our little bird. And that's what it looks like so far. I wanted to glue it down before we decorated it any further. Now I'm gonna use an orange Sharpie again for the beak and just kind of sketch that on there, providing a little bit of color. I love to use Sharpies on burlap. It works great and you don't have to worry about the bleeding from a paint pen. I'm gonna do the same thing for the little bird eye. I could kind of feel where it was just doing a little black circle there. Now I'm gonna use those same burlap leaves that we used on the first burlap bird. They worked so well. So I thought we could try to use them on this kind of bigger version of a bird as well. And I'm gonna kind of alternate like colors like that, kind of using some of the bigger size ones cause there's like two size of the burlap leaves. 
but I love these. Only one of my Dollar Trees seems to have these so far, but hopefully everybody gets them in because they're so cute. It happens to be the same Dollar Tree that still does not have any shore living. Could not believe it when I went there yesterday. They have two empty aisles. I guess it's gonna go in one of the aisles. Then I'm gonna use a very light blue Sharpie. I love Sharpies. I'm always hoarding all the colors I can find and just going around that border all the way around the bird to kind of sketch it out, give a little bit of blue color to this and kind of bring out the outline of the bird. I also go in and just kind of outline the little burlap feathers to kind of go with the theme. I do the white ones and then I go back and end up doing the brown ones too. Now when it dried, you could kind of see it has a bigger wing. You could outline that too and I might go back and do it <laughs> now that I see it a little bit better. I thought we can make the hanger look a little bit better than the raw wood beads. And I got these um, with the Easter stuff at Dollar Tree, these colorful painted wood beads. And we're gonna like alternate like the light blue and the tan. I think that's gonna look really cute with this. It's gonna match our little bird. Whenever I do wood beads on a sign, I always like to do like an even number. So it's gonna hang right if I use it on a nail. And I just tie a knot back into the hanger and staple that back to the frame on the back. Super cute. Now, the only thing left is I wanted to add a flower. These are the burlap flowers that I was talking about that I found also with the burlap leaves. Look how cute they are. There are three of them in a package and they're not adhesive or anything like that. They're just like already all put together, a cute little burlap flower. I thought it would look good maybe right here at the bottom of my sign, just to bring a little flower, a little spring touch in. And so I'm just gonna glue that to the frame. And that's all there is to this bird DIY. I think it turned out really cute. What do you guys think about this little burlap bird? Super fun. Okay, the next bird DIYs we're gonna do is I want to decorate uh, my tear tray that's on my kitchen table for spring and so I thought we would do more bird DIYs but this time for my tear tray. This is the tear tray that I'm decorating today. It's my round wood one and I had Easter on there before so it was empty. I'm gonna use some of this wired a garland from the Dollar Tree. I love it because it's got like little white buds and little green leaves. And this was so easy. I just wrapped it around, cut it down to size and winded it upon each other. I didn't need to hot glue it or anything to attach it to my tear tray. And I told you I love this sign so much that I bought two, right? So I might as well use both, but it's too big for a tear tray. But these new signs from the Dollar Tree are perfect for all of my tear trays, they fit perfectly like, um, I use them kind of horizontally on the tops, but you know, vertically on the bottom, they still fit. They have those in all different colors, like white, black, the wood. And so I'm gonna use this canvas and put it on that little blocky Dollar Tree sign to make a smaller tear tray sign for my bird tear tray. So. Same thing, I'm just having to remove the canvas from the frame that's on there. And be sure to save your sawtooth hangers that are on the back of your canvases um, because they are great little um, hammer in hangers for other DIYs. Just trying to get my corners out. Sometimes a pair of pliers can come in handy there. And all I'm gonna use um, on the canvas is the bird part. I thought we can make a cute little bird sign for the top of my tear tray. And this was kind of my inspiration piece for my entire bird tear tray DIYs. Um, kind of gonna go with this kind of color scheme and theme for the whole tray. So I just draw that out with an ink pen on the back of the canvas. And this canvas is so easy to cut. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it down to size. I got a pretty good job done there, but I do want you to kind of see that brown wood um, slightly around the edges. So I'm gonna go down and just trim down the sides just a little bit 
so that you're gonna be able to see a little bit of that brown wood peek through because I'm gonna be using a lot of that color wood. I want it really a very rustic um, spring tear tray. So I think that looks pretty good like that. And so we're ready to put this together. We're just gonna simply put Mod Podge on the back of the canvas. I probably used way too much, I always do. The Mod Podge comes out so it's so thin, it always comes out too quickly for me. And a Mod Podge that to the front of our sign. I'm just gonna use that baby wipe to kind of smooth that out, kind of clean up all of the excess, but also using some of it to seal the top of the little bird sign too. And as you can see, I still had more glue in there when I kind of scrape it down. So I'm gonna scrape that, kind of clean up the excess Mod Podge. I had way too much. And then I'm gonna go over the top of it and just seal it down some more. And it's so pretty, I love the sign. Once I got it all glued down and dried, I decided I kind of wanted to go with that groove that's in it and kind of cut it to look like two different boards, right? So I'm kind of feeling in the canvas exactly where I need to cut. And then just going in with my razor blade and kind of cutting that canvas down where I can kind of make it look like two parts to kind of give the little sign some more character trying to open it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna go in with a sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree and sand it to kind of make it look rustic and make sure you can kind of see that seam in there. Just a little fun detail to make your sign look a little bit more rustic. And these blue colors are perfect to go with my coastal theme in my house. It looks really cute together. So that's our first DIY for our little bird tear tray and I'll show you how I put that together once we're done with all of the DIYs. But this is how it turned out, isn't it cute? I just love that image, I think it's beautiful. Okay, our next DIY, I got this little blue chunky bird at the Dollar Tree and this little flower candle holder from the Dollar Tree. Now one of y'all, I'm trying to remember who, gave me this idea. She did this with like her, I think her, a chicken. She said it looked like a nest. And I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. So I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna mix a little ivory with some Antique Wax by Waverly. Basically just wanted a tan color and I didn't really have anything. And then I'm gonna go over the entire candle holder with that to kinda give it more of a nest feel, less of a green feel. So it doesn't matter what color you get. If you're gonna paint it, you can make it any color you want. I just flip it over and I'm gonna do the same thing here on the other side. And basically I just wanna make a very simple little nest um, for my little bird to sit on my tear tray. It's gonna help it sit up and it's gonna kinda make, make it look cute. Then I distress all over with the Antique Wax by Waverly to give a little bit more brown, a little bit more texture to it. I'm gonna do that on the sides as well. Just distressing with the Antique Wax by Waverly kind of give it that nest feel. Okay, we got that all dried. I thought a little bit of nesting material would look cute in there too, to kind of add to it. And so I'm gonna use just a little bit of Spanish moss, just a tiny bit, kind of can peek out the sides of the bird to kind of make it look like a nest. And then sit my little blue bird on there, the color is perfect for my tear tray and I think this is gonna look really cute on the top of my tear tray as well. Just trimming up any um, crazy filler that's sticking out and there we go. Our little bird sitting on a nest. It does look like a nest, right? And here is my little bird. I think it's super sweet and what a great idea. Okay, the next DIY is so easy. This is a garden pick from the spring section at the Dollar Tree. Um, they had a couple different versions. Doesn't really matter which one. This one has flowers on it. I thought it was cute. And it's so easy to use pliers to remove the little pick off these. I've used these in other spring DIYs and now I have a cute little birdhouse that I can use. I'm gonna go ahead and keep the galvanized metal. I think that's cute. 
But I thought we could like use like a blue paint pen, like kind of this mint green color and just go in and kind of provide a little bit of color on the flowers just to provide a little color, a little fun to the like boring galvanized metal. But basically that's the only area I'm gonna paint is just that little detail on there. I'm gonna leave the rest of it, the galvanized metal. And then I'm gonna take a little Spanish moss to fill inside. It's all open at the bottom to kind of make it look like a nest. And then I'm gonna use a little white model magic from the Dollar Tree to just form some little balls and just squish them into a couple little eggs to put in there. You could always use colored Mod Podge if you wanted colored eggs. I'm gonna hot glue mine in there so they don't go anywhere. Um, sometimes I can't find the Model Magic at the Dollar Tree and I find it at the Dollar General as well. And I think it's even cheaper there. So I think two eggs, I'm just gonna leave mine white, are gonna be super cute in there. I'm just gonna kind of glue those in the nesting material and we have a little birdhouse that is gonna be just the perfect size for a tear tray. And it was so easy to put together. So here's our little galvanized metal birdhouse with a few little surprise eggs inside. Okay, now these I just happen to have left over from Easter. I have no idea, I've had these forever. Um, so I'm gonna use them because they're kind of perfect, but just kind of showing them to you so you can kind of see how they're put together. If you wanted to kind of make your own eggs and make your own nest, it wouldn't be too hard. And then check out these adorable little birds that I got at the Target dollar spot the other day. They're a little expensive for the size of them. They're $3 a piece but look how beautiful they are. This one's like aqua, and this one's like a sky blue color. One's kind of standing up, one's kind of like leaning down. And normally I'd like them to be like $1.25, like at the Dollar Tree, but they were so cute that I decided to go ahead and go with them. I think they're gonna be perfect for the tear tray. I'm gonna use this one just as is, but the other one, I thought we could make a little DIY um, birdhouse using one of these cloches for the shape from the Dollar Tree and then some of that wired jute also from the Dollar Tree. Now, this was a little experimental, but it worked. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is use the cloche as, it's like the perfect shape for a little tiny birdhouse, right? Um, just as the shape to kind of um, make this work. You know, this has the wire in it, so it's gonna keep shape. Um, but I kind of need a starting point. And so what I do is just kind of wrap that around um, my cloche like that. I probably should have glued the ends because the ends of this always frays so badly, especially if you've been working with it a little bit. Um, but I'm gonna cut them all a little bit longer here and fold them inside. So I do have a little bit extra to work with if I need to. But I just went around the shape of the cloche with my first one. And then I'm gonna start here on my second row, just doing a crisscross, like an X shape over my first wire jute. And you're gonna wanna use some like heavy duty scissors to cut that too. Then I'm gonna kinda go in between these two, pull it down, crisscross over the top, cut it down to size, and secure it too. And then I'm gonna do it one more time. And it's totally giving me that birdhouse vibe, but I need it to be open with like no plastic in there. So I thought I would take some of the thinner Dollar Tree brown rope to go around the bottom of the birdcage to make a ring. So I have something to attach all of the little wire jute to and we'll have a little bit of a structure. Now, this step is a little tricky. What I wanna do is make sure that the top stays in place. So I grab some burlap from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna cut down a little burlap circle, something that's gonna match but kinda serve a purpose. And then I'm gonna glue that on the very top of my birdcage to each one of those wire jutes to kinda keep it together. Um, just for the next step so it doesn't all fall apart. 
And I'm being careful not to glue it to the plastic cloche because I wanna be able to pull that out after my next step of the bird cage. So that looks pretty good. And you can see the fraying that's going on on the wire jute. I'm just gonna go ahead and glue the rope just to the wire jute, trying to avoid um, gluing it onto the plastic again. And I'm just going along the base here so that I can cut off all of that extra wire jute that's frayed and that won't cause any problems. So just going all the way around, trying to keep the spacing fairly even as I go until I get to the end, cut it down and kind of glue it to itself there at the end. So we have the structure of the bird cage. Since I use the wire jute, I think it will keep its shape. So I just pull down all of the wires to unhook them from the cloche. And then I have to wiggle it kind of back and forth to get it out because you know, there were a few areas probably where I glued the rope down that was a little bit glued to it. So just kind of disconnecting those. And then I can just wiggle the little plastic part out but it did a great job of giving me that exact kind of shape and size that I wanted. So now that I have it all put together, I just have to go around and cut off my extra wire jute, all of the frayed mess there at the end, trying to get it as close to the rope as I can, just to kind of give me a clean edge. And I'm really glad I did this little bird DIY. I think it turned out so cute. I could kind of see it in my head, but I really didn't know if it would work. And I had an extra one of those bee cloches because I planned to make it into a beehive. <laughs> and so there's our little bird cage. Isn't it cute? Now, the only thing I think it needs is a bird and a base. Now for the base, I needed something that was about that size and I kind of wanted something that was wood. And so I'm gonna use one of those little wood slice coasters. Um, they have these at the Dollar Tree now, but I actually got this one at Dollar General, I think before they started carrying them at Dollar Tree. And they're just called coasters. You get like two in a package. And I thought like the wood bark would go great with the bird theme and it's the perfect size. So I'm just gonna sit my little target bird on there and put the little bird cage right on top. Kind of a miniature version of the little bird cage from the dollar, the dollar spot at Target. And this is how it turned out. And it's just the perfect size for one of these little birds from Target. And here's my little DIY bird cage. Super cute. And don't worry if you can't find like little bird cages and stuff like this, because you can usually DIY just about anything and it turns out really cute. Okay, I found this at the Dollar Tree the other day. I thought it was very spring. It's just a bottle with flowers all over. I like it kind of as is. I thought about kind of putting something in it, but I kind of like the simplicity of just a glass bottle with flowers all over it. Doesn't necessarily have birds on it, but I think it's gonna totally go with my like spring vibe um, on the bottom of my little bird tear tray. So basically, I just removed the tag and it is ready to go. I think the flowers on it are really lovely though. Aren't they pretty? And I am gonna do some flowers on this tear tray as well since it is a spring theme. Now I wanna make a little bird sign and I got these at the spring section at Dollar Tree, these little chalkboard birds. And I'm gonna use that other wood slice coaster um, from Dollar General. But look, see, these are the ones that I got at Dollar Tree the other day. Very similar, almost the same size, maybe a little bit smaller than the coaster ones from Dollar General. And I thought this would make a really cute background for a little bird sign using that little chalkboard bird. I bought those kind of for the structure of the bird ornament, not necessarily for the chalkboard. Um, and so if you flip them over, they're wood on the other side, right? 
And they're just cute little birds that I thought would be really great size DIY for a tear tray. Kind of like that. And then we can just stand it up. Now I want to leave like the wood coaster slice, you know, wood. And so I thought I would just go in and paint this. And again, I'm testing out some of that Dollar Tree paint. This is like, um, I kind of remember the color. I think it was called tea something. Now I'm going to have to look it up and put it in the description. But it's a very soft blue. And I'm just kind of looking for, you know, a very light, rough, um, stain on this so it actually worked great and you get a pretty large bottle of it for $1.25 at the Dollar Tree ready to attach my little bird to my little wood slice and it does have that little hole in it because it was an ornament so I'm going to use one of the little ornament hangers that came with it and just tie a very simple little finger bow just to cover that up just a decorative little tip to cover those annoying little holes without having to spackle it or anything like that. And I thought this was just a very simple, rustic little bird DIY that we can use on my tear tray for spring. Now I do want it to stand up, so I'm gonna use a couple of those mini Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree and just kind of glue a couple of them together and then to the back of the wood slice. And we have just a very simple little standing sign. It doesn't take much to stand that up. Super simple, but I think it turned out really cute. Here is our little bird sign. I love it. I love the simplicity of it and it gives me a pop of blue on my tear tray. Okay, our next DIY, I'm gonna use one of these little wood birdhouses from the Dollar Tree. Um, they have different ones. This one's got like the two holes, the two perches, doesn't matter. But these are the perfect size for a tear tray, especially for a bird theme. I'm gonna go over the whole thing with some Antique Wax by Waverly, and then I'm gonna wipe it off with a baby wipe because I kinda want that medium wood finish, not necessarily like a dark stain on that. And I'm gonna do that all over. I just wanted a very rustic looking little birdhouse that's gonna go well on this tear tray. So I'm gonna go ahead and like do all four sides, also underneath the roof line, trying to cover up all of the raw wood and then following that up with a baby wipe, kind of make it a little bit lighter. You guys know I love my Antique Wax by Waverly. It's just so much faster and easier than staining. And then I'm gonna use the excess to kind of do the base as well, the top of the base. And then I'm gonna put it up on something, so I thought I might as well try to stain the bottom as well, just so none of the exposed raw wood is visible. Now I told you I wanted it to look rustic, right? So I'm also gonna go over it and distress it with ivory all over to give me that like chippy wood, weathered, kind of like farmhouse vibe on this, wiping the excess off with the baby wipe, blending it in, and it really made it look old and weathered, which was the look I was going for. Now, I think it looks pretty good like that. I did want to add a touch of color though. So I'm using like a mint green paint pen, and I'm just doing like the edges in that color just to bring in a little bit of blue and I just outline a few things just to bring in a, a few pops of color, but mainly it's just gonna be the stained wood. So I go around the base and the roof line with it. I'm also gonna outline the little holes in the birdhouse just to provide a little color there. I already colored in like the, the tips of the little perches as well, just to make it more fun. Then we're gonna make a base with those Dollar Tree Jenga blocks again. I kinda like these that have like the two different colors of the Jenga blocks, they're kinda cool. And I'm gonna use like a combination of six of them to make kind of a big enough base to hold this up, but give it a little bit of height. I wanna use this on the bottom of my tear tray and I want it to be big enough. So I'm just gonna make a base. I glue a three together and then three together, and then I'm gonna glue those together side by side 
to make the perfect size little stand for our little birdhouse. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave them that stain. I have a kind of a plan to disguise those and I thought it would be cute if they looked like they were covered in moss. So I'm just gonna use some reindeer moss from the Dollar Tree and just kind of crazily glue that all over the four sides that's gonna be visible. It's gonna kind of cover up the seams there and those little Jenga blocks. You just make it look a little bit more uniform and I like the pop of color with the green moss coming in there. So just all four sides. And now we can attach that to our little birdhouse. Just a little hot glue on top and stick it on there. Super cute. Now you could kind of see inside the birdhouse a little bit there um, where there's like raw wood inside. And I do want it to look like, you know, it is an occupied birdhouse. So I'm gonna take a little Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree and just kind of pop that in that holes, the holes of the birdhouse, just to give it that little nest feel. I'm not gonna do eggs or anything in this one. It's kind of too small, I think. I don't think you'd be able to see them. But that looks cool and it's a nice contrast against the green moss on there, I think. So there's our little rustic wood birdhouse. I love the little touches of the blue or mint green color. Um, I think that just makes it pop a little bit and the little stand covered in moss. Perfect for the tear tray. Now I found this at the Dollar Tree. They had like these in like butterflies, different animals, but I love the bird one. It's like a lighter color of wood and it's got like blue, pink, and orange flowers cut out on it. It's so cute. And it's the perfect size for a tear tray. It's already got a stand. I'm gonna dip a baby wipe and a little antique wax by Waverly. And we're gonna do a very simple little medium stain doing it that way over the existing wood that was on there. You can still see the wood grain through it, but it's gonna make it look a little bit darker to match the finishes on the other DIYs we're doing today. So that was simple, really easy. Then I'm gonna distress the flowers because they're a little bright with a little ivory, just to tone them down a little bit. And there's our little bird. I think it's so cute for our tear tray and it's very colorful for spring. I think that's gonna look great with everything else we made. And this is another one of those wood signs from the Dollar Tree, I love these. This is the same uh, medium wood color as the first one that we made for the top of the tear tray. And then I got some of these little mirror wall stickers from the Dollar Tree with this little bird and flowers. And I thought it would be perfect to make a little bird sign for our tear tray. Now, whenever you DIY these little mirror things, they do have a film over them. Sometimes I forget because it's a little hard. You got to kind of scratch them with your fingernail just to get it started and then peel that off and it's going to give you that mirror finish. Otherwise, you're going to get stuck kind of painting directly on the, the plastic wrap, which you're not really supposed to. Then I'm going to use that same light blue paint from the Dollar Tree. And we are gonna kind of paint that in one direction with a brush. It is gonna leave a little bit of a brush stroke through with the mirror showing through. So I do go over it with a couple coats to make it have a little bit better coverage. Now be careful if you're using a heat gun to dry these because I kind of melted mine a little bit. I didn't know they were so fragile, but you'll see in the final result. I totally melted mine a little bit. But I'm gonna kind of do the same exact um, layout they had because I think it's gonna be the perfect size if I were to use this sign like vertically like this on my tear tray. Some flowers. I used a little bit of hot glue even though they were already stickers. You might not want to because I didn't know they were heat sensitive. Luckily I was only using a small amount. Another flower right here. And then the other one is like a branch of flowers. They're all kind of connected. And it's gonna fit perfectly up here at top.
And there is our little bird sign. I did try to go in there with my heat gun a little bit to make sure it was dry. And you can see a little warping on top right there. That's what happened with my heat gun. It started to melt and kind of warp a little bit. So you might not want to use heat on these at all. Lesson learned. But I think it turned out super cute. What do you think? Okay, another DIY. I found this in the spring section at the Dollar Tree, these adorable little birdhouses. I thought we could paint this with that Dollar Tree a blue paint as well. And kind of distress it, make it look old too. But look how cute it is with a little bird cutout on front. I thought that'd be perfect for a bird tear tray. They have these in like different styles. I was just looking at them there today. They have like different flowered ones and stuff as well. I'm gonna go over all of the actual birdhouse itself with that blue paint. And then I plan on staining the top of the roof um, with some antique wax by Waverly, kind of making it two-toned. This paint is thin enough where it kind of provides a little bit of a stain. Um, and some of the areas don't want to paint too well, but that's okay because I'm going for kind of like a rustic vibe on this. So I think it's going to work. I'm just trying to make sure that I have everything covered, including the base with the blue. And it has like a little rope hanger on there. I think that's cute. It's kind of in the way, but I'm going to leave it there. And then I'm just going to use a baby wipe that I dipped in Antique Wax by Waverly on the roof, it's gonna give us that same medium wood stain, super easy. And then I'm also gonna use that to distress the rest of the blue birdhouse, kind of all over, just to make it look weathered and a little bit older, have a little bit more character, right? And you can always go back in there with your original color if you think that you've distressed a little heavy. It's so cute. I love it. And it's really the perfect size for a tear tray. It's just the right height. I think it's going to look really cute. I do put a little bit of Spanish moss inside, kind of like I did with the other one, to kind of make it look like birds have been nesting in there. Kind of threw the bird cut out there. I think it's ready to go, and I think it's perfect for my bird theme. Here is our little bird birdhouse. And I'm loving the color. Super cute. Okay, now I wanted some greenery and Dollar Tree is really stepping up the game on the greenery. This is a eucalyptus. So I thought I would cut this down into smaller pieces here. And we can kind of use these all over the tear tray. It's gonna give me that kind of like tree vibe that I'm going for with all of my birds. So I just cut that down into three longer pieces. I'll probably use those on the bottom since they're rather large. But aren't they cute? And then I also got this um, little pick at the Dollar Tree as well. And what I'm gonna do on this one is just kind of pull these off this is kind of like a shorter squatty version of some greenery. And these are gonna be perfect for the top and any of the little spots all around the tear tray that need a little touch of greenery. And then since it's spring, I wanted some flowers and I wanted to do that kind of light pink flower that was on the bird canvas. So I'm using these little dogwood flowers from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna pull them off I want lots of them because I want to be able to scatter those all over the tear tray to bring in a little color and a little spring to our bird DIYs. And it's time to put the bird DIYs on my tear tray for my kitchen table. Again, I already did the garland around them, which I think is so cute. And here is our little bird canvas for the top. It fits in there perfectly now. When it was a canvas, it was way too big. And our little bird on a nest, using the little candle holder 
from the Dollar Tree. I think that looks really cute. And I love the little blue bird. He's so adorable. And here is our little galvanized metal birdhouse with a few birds inside. It's nice and small. I thought it would work well up here at the top. And one of my little bird nests that I had left over from Easter. I love the little blue speckled eggs in it. And then that little like mint green bird from Target Dollar Spot is just the right size to finish off the top tier. Now I do wanna kind of fill it in and make it fuller. So I'm gonna use some of that greenery that we just took apart. There was like kind of a big gap here in front of the little bird sign. So I'm gonna put a couple there and then kind of scatter a couple of the little pink flowers on there as well. See how similar they are to the flowers on the canvas? Super cute. Now we can start for the bottom, the larger part of my tear tray with the rest of our bird DIYs. Here's our little DIY birdhouse on the little wood slice coaster with the little Target dollar spot bird inside. I absolutely love that. Wasn't sure if that DIY was gonna work, <laughs> but I think it turned out really cute. And then here is our little flower bottle. Just simple. I thought it would be look good here towards the back because it's nice and tall with maybe a little bird nest inside and right in front of it. And then moving on, here is our little bird wood slice DIY that was super easy to put together. You could use the ones from the Dollar General or that you know they have those at the Dollar Spot now if you're lucky. And here's our little DIY birdhouse that we made on the little mossy post. It's just the right size now for the bottom tier. Fits in there nicely. And here is the little flower cutout bird from the Dollar Tree that we just gave a quick little makeover to make the wood kind of go with our other DIYs. The colors on it are perfect though. And our little sign that we made out of the little mirror stickers, painted blue. Have enough room in front of that for another one of those little bird nests. So we'll lay that in front. And then I just kind of have one more item here I have to kind of make room for on the bottom of my tear tray. And that is this blue bird birdhouse. It's so cute. I love the colors. I love the wood for the roof on that too. It all just goes together so well. And now we just need to fill up all of kind of like the dead space in there. I'm gonna use the larger like eucalyptus leaves here on the bottom to kind of fill up some more area. And again, sprinkling those little pink dogwood flowers all over as well. I always like a full tear tray. I think it makes them look really great. And I think this is gonna give it just way more of a spring vibe. And another pop of color besides the blue, we also have the pretty little pink flowers. So over here, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna fill it in with some more of that eucalyptus. And scattering flowers here and there. I think I did pretty much use almost every single one of the little flowers that we took off. And I have a little bit of room here in front of this birdhouse for a flower and a little greenery too. Just trying to fill up any of the gaps in between the pieces, kind of make it all go together. I really hope you guys enjoyed these bird DIYs today for spring. I had so much fun putting all this together. I think they turned out so cute. And um, even though I had to take down all of my Easter decorations, I still have some spring fun for my house. So it's looking pretty cute. Just a few more gaps here to fill up. And look how cute 
these little bird DIYs turned out for this tear tray. I just love them. I think they all really go together. I love that I was able to keep like a blue touch throughout. And you can definitely see the bird theme that I was going for. And it's pretty from all directions. So it's gonna be perfect for my kitchen table for spring. I think my favorite piece is this little guy in his little DIY birdhouse. But I think it turned out really fun. What do you guys think about this? Now, be sure to comment your favorite bird DIY below. Don't forget to subscribe. We're almost at 15,000 subscribers. I'm gonna have to have a big contest like we had last year, a big giveaway that will be fun. And don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed today's content. And this is kind of how it looks all together. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment to tell you that I've introduced memberships on my channel for $4.99 a month. You can get early access to my videos. You're also going to get some other perks, including a, a member shout out. I have two members already, Coastal Couple and Karen O'Haran. I really appreciate you guys joining the Crafty Beach Bum community and supporting me here on YouTube. It really helps a small channel like me get all this content out to you. Okay, it's time for the final reveal. Thank you for watching. When lights go out You're in
that's it. If you'd like to watch more Crafty Beach, YouTube thinks that you might enjoy this video right here.